In this video, let's talk about the product that solved a problem that generations of photographers have had for so long. Before anything else, thank you for finding this channel. And if you are into photography and all the tech around it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the bell button so you will be notified for my future videos. Let's get right into it. We are talking about the HNY Revo Ring. And I'm sure by now most of you already know what this thing is, but the important thing to check out is does it do its job well? And really, what innovation is in this product? Now really, there are so many aspects about this product that made it turn a lot of heads. Of course, this was initially launched as a Kickstarter project from the brand H&Y, but it is now available through stores, if I'm not mistaken. Now for transparency, this was sent to me by our good friends from H&Y in Hong Kong. However, they did not dictate whatever I'm going to say and they do not get a say in whatever I say about this video. But of course, if you knew me, you would know that I'm a huge fan of h and I mean, really, their magnetic filter system is just one of the best gifts to any landscape photographer. But in any case, let's go ahead and see what this is all about. Now the packaging is really very simple. It's a box with a pouch inside. And this particular one is the variable ND plus CPL version with a 67 to 82 millimeter compatibility. Now that's of course one of the biggest things about the Revo Ring, which we, we will see in just a bit. And so here we have the Revo Ring. Now, again, this is the version with the very ND and CPL combination, but there is also a version of this one with just the Revo Ring itself. Perhaps let's talk about first what the Revo Ring really is. I mean, if you're a landscape photographer or really anyone who uses filters, you would have had this frustration with having many different lenses with different filter threads meaning some of your lenses might be 67 millimeters, some of your lenses might be 77 or 82, and some go as small as 40.5 millimeters. And the annoying thing about that is that you're gonna have to get either one variant of filter for each size, or you're gonna have to get step-up rings. And basically the Revo ring makes step-up rings obsolete. Now of course it's not gonna cover all the ranges but it does cover a lot in just one variant. For this one for example it covers 67 to 82 meaning that covers 67, 72, 77, and 82 millimeters. At the very least most fast lenses nowadays have filter diameters within that range so that really solves a problem. So for this one we're going to talk about the Revo ring, we're going to talk about the CPL, and we're going to talk about the VND and basically the purpose and the performance. First let's talk about the ring. How does it work? Well, basically there are four layers here or four different rings connected together. One ring is for mounting, the other ring is for controlling the mounting, the third ring is the CPL, and the fourth controls the very ND. And basically the genius about the Revo ring is that when you turn the third and fourth layer, the filter thread contracts. And that means that it's going all the way down to 67 millimeters and as you release it opens up all the way to 82 millimeters so the mounting is a bit different you don't really need to turn until you feel it lock but instead you basically close it down get your lens put it right in the middle and release and it's going to be mounted you barely have to turn to lock it anyway but Basically, that's how you mount it. It kind of takes a bit of practice to really get used to mounting the filter. And I can say that with all honesty because I dropped the filter the first time around. But yeah, it's, it's pretty steady and it should be able to 
support the weight of the camera. This is really something I do whenever I test filter holders because I want to make sure that they don't just fall off the camera or the other way around. In terms of mounting, that's really an amazing thing because again, it's compatible with four different filter sizes. Now let's talk about the CPL, what it does, and basically how you control it. Now the CPL, of course, redirects light to get rid of unwanted reflections. And this is, well for me at least, most commonly used for landscape photography in getting rid of reflections in the water. You can also make use of this to intensify the reflections if you're making use of that as a visual element. At the same time, what it does is actually intensify blue skies whenever you are facing the right direction during the day. And the right direction basically means that you are not pointing towards or against the sun. Now I did a specific test for the CPL and this was shot at 24 millimeters and you can see how it is intensifying the blue sky and kind of giving a bit more texture on the clouds. And for a landscape photographer, that's basically what you want out of it. Now at 24 millimeters, we don't see any vignette and we don't see any overpolarization. Overpolarization is that you see that one side of the sky is polarized and the other side of the sky isn't. So there's kind of an awkward gradient in your sky. And for this one, it particularly performs pretty well. Now to control the CPL or the circular polarizer, all you really have to do is rotate the two front elements or the two front layers and by that you're able to control the CPL only without getting any ND effect meaning that your shot is not getting any darker it's just moving the polarizer. So given that it's an obvious benefit that you can also use this particular filter as just a CPL when you don't really need to stop down your exposure. Now landscape photographers don't really use VND so much because of an artifact that we see in denser VND filters. And well, this one isn't really free of that artifact, but perhaps let me show you up to how wide you can keep using it or up to what density you can keep using it depending on the situation and depending on the focal length of your lens. Now VND filters are actually more popular with portrait shooters or video shooters for the reason that they either want to be able to control their shutter speed for the proper frame rate or they want to be able to maximize a fast aperture even if it is very bright outside. So we basically have to keep those goals in mind in trying to judge if this will be usable for those specific genres. Now let's talk about the limitations of usage. Basically the question is when does that annoying X artifact come out? So when I was testing this, of course, I would first try it with an ultra wide angle lens and shooting with a 16 millimeter, I noticed that the X comes out around between five to six stops. So perhaps if you're shooting with a wide angle lens, you're gonna be able to shoot comfortably just below that. In application that makes it quite usable for portrait shooters or video shooters who don't really need to go all the way to 10 stops. So they can keep using their ultra wide angle lenses with this filter without getting that annoying X artifact. Now as we move towards the normal range 35 to 50 millimeters for example the tolerance for the X artifact gets a bit better but not by significantly so much. Now as we move towards 70 millimeters, 85 millimeters, it gets to a point wherein you're using a very small fraction of the area. The artifact gets a bit less intense and ultimately when you go beyond 100 millimeters, even if you go max at 10 stops, you don't really get the artifact anymore. However, I did notice a bit of color shift towards the blue side whenever you go towards nine or 10 stops. Now that really isn't so much of a problem since it's very mild and all you have to do is shift your white balance to get better color accuracy. So that also means that technically landscape photographers can use the Revo ring if you're shooting wide, then just don't go beyond five or six stops. 
And if you're using telephoto, then you can use it in its full capacity without getting the cross artifact. So the usability is pretty much the same with video shooters and portrait shooters. However, they might feel a bit more free using the Revo Ring than landscape photographers, given that they don't really need so much to go beyond five or six stops as compared to landscape photographers who might want to use this for really long exposures. Then again, you're going to have to shoot with a much longer lens. It can withstand a few dings and falls and I can attest to it because again, I dropped the filter on the very first day that I was testing it out. Now given all that, of course, it's a revolutionary product as the name suggests because again, who would have thought that you have a solution to that annoying filter thread problem? I mean, you got me at that. But of course, it gives us good optics. It has a very nice CPL, a very nice VND, and given all the limitations, it can perform really well in the right hands. In addition, the glass quality is good. Aside from its durability and moisture resistance, the color doesn't change so much. It's very minimal at 10 stops, and I mean, I know you can work with that. So there. That's my very short review of the HNY Revo Ring CPL VND. And if you have any questions, suggestions, reactions, don't forget to leave them down below. And if you haven't, again, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.